Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Please subscribe if you don't already. It's so much more rewarding to see people watching the films than not. And it also means you keep updated. I have to say, I'm also very flattered that so many of you have become frequent visitors. So thank you. This is part 24 of the history of the gyroplane. A couple of you have asked about pusher versus tractor configuration and why it is that Little Wing are the only tractor configured gyroplane offered for sale right now. It's a good question and it's the subject of this film. As you'll know from the history of the gyroplane series, the early gyroplanes, almost without exception, were of tractor configuration. Sierra, Weir, Hafner were all tractor designs. There was an exception, the Nagler Helio cycle of 1937, which is quite an interesting design beyond its pusher configuration because it also had a powered rotor and could hover. But that's another story and I guess World War II got in the way. Actually, a little more of the story. Bruno Nagler survived World War II and came to the USA where he built the Vertigyro VG1, except this time in tractor configuration. Back to the question asked. Why are all the sport gyroplanes, or certainly the popular ones, all in pusher configuration? Well, pusher gyros have some fairly fundamental advantages, and especially if one of the design aims is to make money from that design commercially. The first is that visibility is excellent, as the pilot's view is unobstructed. The other advantage is simplicity of the design and structure. In that with a pusher aircraft, all of the load is centered around the rotor mast and the aircraft main loads, pilot, motor, fuel tank, landing gear are attached. The main advantage for tractor designs isn't the thrust line as many suggest, because that can be designed effectively in either configuration, but the advantage is the efficiency of the propeller and motor. Propeller in that you can use a much bigger propeller as you're not limited by the keel tube, and the propeller also has much better airflow to it, and that is also true for the engine. A more efficient propeller also has the advantage of being able to be turned more slowly for the same thrust, and therefore, ultimately, an ability to make the aircraft quieter. But perhaps an obvious design configuration for tractor aircraft is that open aircraft need a well-placed windscreen to avoid the propeller blast. The other pain for a tractor gyroplane is the pre-rotator that needs careful mounting to avoid further degradation of the pilot's visibility. However, whilst it may be true that today only the little wings design is marketed, over the years there have been a great many attempts at tractor-like gyroplanes. Here, an early attempt of 1975, the Jerrycopter by John Hewitt, Tennessee. Then, a self-designed aircraft, the JE-2 by Jim Ike of 1977. Another interesting aircraft was the tandem two-seat tractor design by Edward Aldifer with his EAA-3. Powered by a Rotax 532 two-stroke and a 72-inch three-blade prop. Or, what about Gyro 2000's Inkenja with a Suzuki 530 motor. There have been some tractor design concepts penned by Yuka Tervamaki. This the JT9, which was actually built from eyeball engineering from somebody in France, and a JT11, which was a side-by-side -side version. There was even a JT9T, which is a tandem enclosed training version. More recently, there have been designs from France and Spain. This, the French Astral, based on a CT2 flight design fixed wing fuselage. The other, the Phoenix Autogyro from Spain. I believe the French aircraft sadly has stalled because of damage to the tail, whilst the Spanish design hasn't been heard of for some years. I have to say, having seen all of the designs, very few of them you could call pretty. And I think in a commercial world, that probably counts for a lot. Oh, and before anyone asks, here is a Yukaterva Mackie pen design for a two-engine, two-prop aircraft. It's the JT-12, but I don't think it's going to get built. 